Before starting the video, make sure to smash that like button. Do it now, it only takes a second to do it, and hit the subscribe button and the bell to turn on notifications so you can be informed whenever I upload new Chronicles. Also, visit my website, that is tpchronicles.com. There you can read articles and see videos that cannot be uploaded on YouTube. You don't want to miss those videos. The link is in the description box below. Also, join me on Facebook, Twitter, IG, TikTok, social platforms. If you are down with the campaign, type CN, which stands for Chronicle Nation, in the comment section. Upon that note, let's get into this next video, and it goes like this. Welcome back to the Wizard of Oz Chronicle. If you are rocking with the infamous Chronicle Nation, please type C in in the comments. Let me know that you appreciate what we are doing here. As always, we are here to uncover the truth hidden in plain sight. This is our mission statement. We are here to unlearn the mental trap in the matrix. Thank you for joining our platform. If you want to uh, show your support, please consider liking and subscribing. To stay informed, remember to turn on your notifications. We appreciate your help. Chronicle Nation, what's your profession? We are proud to present the final phase of this series. The link can be found in the description below for those new to our channel and who have yet to see the previous episodes. In the upcoming chapter of the Chronicle, this Chronicle, we will dive into the true significance of the yellow brick road. Also, people, as we found out in the previous Chronicles, it is also known as the golden brick road. We understand how important it is to uncover the real story behind it, and we are excited to share our findings with you. At the Chronicle Nation, we value honesty and independence and believe you deserve to know the truth. Ali is water. Take it into the desert and spread it upon the open sand in the midday sun. It is our way. You're going back to see Stabar? I wish to return to our old ways. The desert's dying still. And the Fremen too, I'm afraid. Well, we're about to go through the crucible. But we'll come out the other side. We always arise from our own ashes. Everything returns later in its changed form. Whenever you see a symbolism in the movies, this, my friend, is a sign that there's a message in this movie. These movies are blueprints of what they are working towards. Instead of getting emotional or captivated by the distractions in the movie, Pray and ask God to help you to see the plot to take control of the minds of the citizens of this world. Right here we see the pyramid. And so I'm going to plug in what we said about the pyramid 
in a previous Chronicle. Watch this. Freemasonry is said to have exerted its influence on every aspect of American society, including its currency. But most scholars agree that the pyramid represented on the bill is the Great Pyramid of Cheops at Giza, which to a Mason is a symbol of the extensions of the craft of Freemasonry from the dawn of civilization in Egypt. For Masons, it is also a reminder of the legend that survivors from Atlantis founded Egyptian civilization and that the United States is the new Atlantis. In this Chronicle, people, we're not going to get into all the details of this movie. But believe me when I say there's a lot of occult symbolisms. And through these occult symbolisms, you can actually look at the movie and you can tell what the synagogues of Satan is doing in the governments and in, in the world. But we took some clips from it pertaining to the Golden Road. On the Golden Road, they believed that they will receive immortality to be gods. And we, quote unquote, the worshipers. Your grandfather's ring. And your father's. And now the Fremen's. To remind you of more deep. To remind you that all humans make mistakes and that all leaders are but human. Now, family, it is imperative that you go back to chapter 2, A through B. If you don't, Chronicle Nation, you won't fully understand the importance of what's about to be exposed in this part of the Chronicle concerning the Yellow Brick Road. In chapter 2B, Eminem will come up initially and pay close attention to the bridge part. I will play it again in the next Chronicle, we're gonna break it down. And we will bring, we will break down what he meant when he said the yellow, or he said the yellow brick road, or what the yellow means according to the secret society and how it relates to Eminem's song, The Yellow Brick Road. You may see some things in this Chronicle people from the previous two Chronicles. And what we believe in um, here in Chronicle Nation is that we use this repetition to expose the evil that the synagogue of Satan is exploiting. The information that we are exposing people is very crucial and critical to understand. Eminem created a song called Yellow Brick Road, or as we also refer it to as the Golden Road. But in this Chronicles chapter 2c, we must continue with Atlantis. In the mind of the secret society, Atlantis plays a significant role in the yellow brick road, and we understand why we are seeing the things that we're seeing today, people. The Trump situations, Biden, uh, the war between Russia and Ukraine, uh, what else? LGBT community, uh, basketball, football, soccer, golf, movies, what's happening in whatever. People, all this is a form of distraction. 
so they can bring forth the era of Atlantis. That's what they believe that the United States of America is, is the, the new Atlantis. And this nation will be the nation that will be used to bring all other nations in subordinate to the new world order. Watch this. Also has stories like the so-called founders of Atlantis founded the Egyptian civilization. And this is where we get so many Egyptian occult symbols that you see majority of all those who sold their souls or went down a yellow brick road or the or the uh, the golden uh, pathway. This is also people basically call the golden edge or the golden age. Too ambitious, too hungry for power. our civilization also paved the way to our future. It gave us the ability to breathe underwater. And so we evolved. Others regressed, became savage. And the king lived out the remainder of his days in self-imposed exile. Either he nor the trident were ever seen again. Please take this time to subscribe, hit the bell to turn on your notifications. You may need to come back sometime Tuesdays and Thursdays around 545 Eastern Standard Time because YouTube believes in shadow blocking, which means everyone will not get notifications because what they're trying to do is destroy all channels like this 
that exposes what the enemies are doing. Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. You know, despite knowing more about our past now than we ever have before, there's still a rich history of ancient civilizations that remains undiscovered. From the unexplained knowledge of the Mayans to the incredible structures built by the Egyptians, there's still so much more to learn. And one of the biggest mysteries that remains is that of Atlantis. Stories have been told of the sunken city for more than 2,000 years, but is the holy grail of archaeology a myth, or is there truth to the idea of an advanced civilization that fell victim to the waves. So in this video, we're gonna dive into Atlantis and try to figure out the real story. The first records that mention Atlantis were the two Socratic dialogues called Temeas and Critias. They were written by Plato, the Greek philosopher, at around 360 BC and were for a speech to be given during the festivities in honor of the goddess Athena. The dialogue told stories that Socrates had supposedly heard from guests about how ancient Athens interacted with other independent states, with one story in particular coming from a man called Critias. This man shared the tale of the experience of his grandfather who had met the Athenian poet Solon, who himself had visited Egypt and spoken with the local priests. There, the priests told of a powerful ancient civilization that was based on an island in the Atlantic Ocean that ruled over several other islands as well as lands across Africa and Europe. The city was built in concentric rings of land and water with elaborate baths a huge harbor and well-equipped barracks. The Atlanteans' knowledge of engineering was second to none, with a canal network and irrigation system that created lush fertile lands where they could grow whatever they wanted. Their society was structured like many others at the time, with kings, a civil administration, and a formidable military. Their power led them to seek further fortunes though, and they waged a war across the rest of Asia and Europe. At the time, Athens was the only state who had the resources to stand up against this invasion and was able to repelled the attacks. Soon after this, earthquakes and floods caused Atlantis to be swallowed up by the sea and lost forever. So now we gotta ask, is this story fact or fiction? Well, the way that Plato used the story of Atlantis in his speech has led most historians to believe that it was simply a way to prove a point. The idea of an all-powerful aggressor being fended off by a weaker force is a classic tale of hope in the face of adversity. It has been suggested that the barbarian-like behavior of the Atlanteans is actually a reference to the acts of the Persians were Carthaginians at the time, and the idea of an island violently disappearing could have been inspired by the eruption of Minoan Santorini, which took place at around 1600 BC and destroyed the island of Thera and majorly impacted settlements on nearby Crete with consequences felt as far away as Egypt. There are, however, those who think Plato's writings were much more accurate historical records than they may initially seem, because he himself said that it was a true story and he even gave a precise date as to when Atlantis fell to the waves. His record of events stated that Solon, who lived 200 years earlier, had directly asked an Egyptian priest in the city of Sais. He said according to writings on the walls of the temple that it was 9,000 years previously, which puts the date at around 9,600 BC. Now, this is a rather precise date and actually coincides with a massive geological phenomenon that happened around that time known as Meltwater Pulse 1b, which was a global event that was triggered by the release of water from the ice sheets and the poles and saw a sea level rise of about 14 meters. Evidence of this event has been found in the Caribbean, the Mississippi River, the Gulf of Mexico, and across the world and would have been more than enough to destroy low-lying island communities. So now let's talk a little about the Egyptian link with Atlantis. The Egyptian Atlantis must have lasted long enough in history that it is part of Egyptian culture. Funerary texts mention it quite often. Indeed, the Egyptian Atlantis, La Meta, corresponds to the West. It also means the West in Egyptian. And West is also where you bury the dead. We see that the idea remains that when you go towards the West, there were many deaths.
Of course, there's still plenty that's not fully understood about ancient Egypt, in particular how they built the pyramids and even the Sphinx. At the time, the pyramids were covered in white limestone, which has since fallen away. But, but could there have been clues in some early descriptions of Atlantis? Because it was referred to by some as the White Island and described as having numerous pyramids. And of course, there are a lot of researchers around the world that claim that the pyramids are a lot older than people think. Also, in 1850, the inventory Stella was discovered in the ruins of the the Temple of Isis by Auguste Mariette. The writing states, Long lived the king of Upper and Lower Egypt, Khufu given life. He found the house of Isis, mistress of the pyramid, by the side of the hollow of Haran, which is the Great Sphinx. And goes on to say, He restored the statue, all covered in painting, of the guardian of the atmosphere who guides the winds with his gaze. So, although controversial, this suggests that the pharaoh Khufu, famous for building the structures such as the Great Pyramid and the Enigmatic Sphinx, merely discovered it and restored it. Now, the Egyptians and Greeks aren't the only to have texts that mention Atlantis. The Berber tribes from North Africa, for example, described a powerful ancient city called Atala. The Vikings spoke of Atli, and the Babylonians mentioned Aralu in texts. There's even record of the city from India written in Sanskrit. They believed that the city was lost during a war between the gods and the titans and gave names to the different stages it went through during the onslaught. Saka Devipa in its early stage, Sveta Devipa, which means White Island, and then Ruta and Daitya, which refer to the two small islands that remained after the majority of the city was submerged. So now let's talk about physical evidence. There are numerous remains found underwater around the world as countless settlements have been lost to the sea over time. Mysterious structures have been found off the coast of Japan in the Mediterranean Sea. There's another theorized lost island known as Mu, which is thought to be in the Pacific Ocean. As far as remains found in the Atlantic Ocean go, there are a few candidates that could be the true Atlantis. For example, large underwater structures that were built by long-lost civilizations have been found off the coast of Africa, near other island outcrops like the Canary Islands. And some say it is possible that this is the final resting spot of Atlantis, where maybe it's still out there in a completely different location still waiting to be found. Atlantis is almost a catch-all term for trying to find the origins of civilization itself. This probably goes back to the 19th century when the US congressman by the name of Ignatius Donnelly wrote a book that was to become the seminal work on Atlantis. It was entitled Atlantis, the Antediluvian World. And in here, what he proposed was that all of the civilizations of the ancient world and the New World, the Americas, had a mother civilization as its source. All of the information that's been left to us on Atlantis by Plato, the Greek uh, philosopher who wrote around 350 BC, suggests that we should be looking for Atlantis somewhere in the area of the Bahamas and the Caribbean. But because of Ignatius Donnelly's ideas to do with a mother civilization, Atlantis there be, therefore becomes this, this concept more than an actual drowned city. I believe that Atlantis existed. I believe that a high culture probably peopled those massive islands of, of the Bahamas and the Caribbean, and they may well have been drowned, destroyed, in the Great Cataclysm, the so-called Younger Dryas event. So in conclusion, despite having been part of legends for thousands of years, there's still no definitive answer that Atlantis never existed. So was it a highly advanced society that ultimately fell victim to natural forces? Well, as we talked about, there is compelling evidence to suggest that there were powerful island states at the time, and this city of course would have been a powerhouse of the ancient world. But really, the only thing we know for sure is that the ocean is insanely vast, and as much as 95% of it is unexplored, so there's bound to be treasure just waiting to be discovered. So who's to say that Atlantis can't be one of them? And the likelihood of an advanced ancient civilization existing is something I 100% believe in. But again, let me know what you think in the comments. And guys, we are trying to make this channel better by providing better... We go forward, we come back. We go forward, 
we come back. Don't be afraid, Father. The answer's right in front of you. The golden path. But you must decide. It's the only way.